Hi everyone, my name is Edgar Cortez. I'm an uh, educator here at IMAX. Um, and today we are doing another uh, workshop Wednesday, and this is my first time kind of uh, doing it with y'all. And we're doing a really fun activity. It's going to be uh, cubism, or a cubist portrait to be exact. Uh, before we start, I just want to say that thank you to ACB. Um, yeah, they're, kind of spon they're sponsoring ACB Helping Here. And um, we are also doing a giveaway, a giveaway like we usually do. Um, if you uh, ordered one of the kits that we have here, I'll show you what's inside later. But if you, yeah, if you manage to get one by, for yourself, you are automatically entered into the giveaway. But you can also comment down below, either today or tomorrow, uh, depending on when you're watching it. And you can, uh, yeah. And you can, yeah, you can comment down below if you want to be entered in uh, the activity again. Um, just to make sure if you all are watching right now, um, it, can you all hear very well? And you all can just uh, maybe comment uh, down below so we can get started, okay? Okay, so to start off, uh, I'm gonna show you what uh, is inside the kit. So I'm gonna go over um, everything that you should have gotten if you, um, if you should came for one. If you, for some reason, did not have a chance to pick one up, pick one up um, I can, we're gonna go over some uh, alternate materials that um, we can that you can use in, in case you don't for some reason you didn't uh, pick it up maybe you couldn't uh, get one for yourself okay okay so to start off uh, we have a Bristol board it's a real nice paper you can see it like this. it's pretty big I believe it's a 14 by by 11 14 by 11 paper pretty simple play right here and if you uh, if you're using for if you're looking for something else you can just use a regular paper that you use to draw at home. Um, you also, we're gonna get a sharpener. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, a ruler. So if you wanna make some straight lines, you can um, you can always do that. Get this one. Yeah, so I'm sure that maybe you already have a ruler at home or even a, a sharpener. Also, inside are some, a pack of uh, Crayola color pencils. And they're all about kind of brown tones, yeah, brown tones, peach, and basically kind of skin tones. So we're gonna use them for this activity. Open them right here. And if you don't have these, don't worry. You can always um, use pretty much any other color pencils. You can see I have some here. And it's um, since it's uh, the style that we're working with, um, it doesn't really matter if it's not realistic or different stuff. So yeah, I actually would want you guys to find some uh, some different color pencils if you have them laying around. And that's pretty much it, except yeah, the pen. There's also a pen, a sharper pen that is in that was uh, that's inside. But we're gonna use that to make some line line art. And if you have one of these sharpie pens, um, just use any pen that you have, and that will work fine. Okay. We do have some people tuning in from Rio Grande City. We have Sarah, Genesis, and Rudy from Rio Grande City, and we have Cindy from Sullivan City. Oh, great, Sullivan City. Great. Yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the chat, and um, and yeah, we'll be reading them, and maybe we can answer, we can communicate, and we'll be working on the activity together. It's gonna be really fun. I really like to do art, so I'm I'm actually very excited to teach you all some stuff about cubism. And if you don't know about cubism, it's a art movement that started uh, in the early 20th century, so in 1907 to be exact. And I have a picture here to show you kind of how it kind of looks, and it's very weird. If you have never seen it before, you might think it's kind of uh, kind of weird, but it's kind of something like this. So as you can see, it's kind of uh, it uses very wacky colors. Um, it uses kind of a lot of shapes. So it's you can see the eye. You have one eye looking straight at you, and then the other eye is kind of like a side view, like yeah, how your eye would look if you were looking at it from the side. So it's very kind of uh, distorted, and it just looks like maybe you're looking at it through a through a glass uh, base or something like that. So we're gonna do something similar to this. Um, instead of yeah, instead of this, we're gonna do kind of like in a bigger scale, but it's the same kind of project. So you can see it there. Okay, so we're gonna start, and as we start, I'm gonna tell you all a little bit about cubism. Um, I wonder how familiar you all are about cubism. If you all know anything about it, you can comment down below. Okay, so what I did is I got my paper and I, and I kind of uh, put it in a board like this so I can show you all and stuff, so I can move it. So it's kind of pretty, 
I just yeah, I just did this to uh, to be a bit more ready for today. Okay, I'm gonna grab a pencil, and then you didn't get a pencil in the kit, but you can always uh, just get one from your from your house from my uh, from anywhere. Okay, so first I want you all to uh, start with the eyes. Okay, so when we do this, I want you all to kind of uh, pick a place uh, to put the eye. So I'm just going to uh, put it here, if you would like to see, kind of like that. And it's going to be very rough. Don't worry about it um, uh, looking uh, realistic or not. Also, I forgot to mention that we're going to try to make it look like us, um, as hard as that, that may be. Um, the good thing about this is that it doesn't really have to look like us, since it's uh, cubism. Um, yeah, so we don't have to worry about it looking realistic, realistic or not. So just kind of keep in mind that you're, you're doing it yourself, okay? So I made a nine like that. You see? Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, work on the second eye. And this one's gonna be the eye that uh, you're looking at from the side. Kind of like this one. So we have one eye looking at you directly, and then uh, the other one looking, you're looking at it from the side. And uh, you can put them anywhere you want, but just make sure kind of, that it kind of uh, makes sense a little bit. So I have mine there. Okay. And since I am wearing glasses, um, I'm going to make sure to put that in here as well. So I'm going to just make a square. So this is your first time uh, viewing cubism. It might look kind of weird to you, or it might you might think that, um, I don't know, maybe you might not like it, or you might think it's kind of uh, strange. And it is strange, uh, especially when it, when it was first invented. It was invented by, or Picasso actually is known as the father of cubism, because he's kind of like the first one to do it. Um, yeah, so when he made it, it completely went against everything that people know about art. So when you, back then, even now, some people uh, associate art with being uh, realistic or kind of portraying something exactly how you see it. But um, this one kind of goes uh, like, so, like against that and it changes that and it just kind of makes everything into shapes, as you can see. So this is uh, my glasses here. And even though glasses don't go up like this, uh, it looks, it's gonna end up looking nice because it's kind of, uh, it's kind of weird and that's uh, what we're looking for, okay? Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the nose. Okay, so I'm gonna make my nose. You can either make your nose from the front or from the side. I'm gonna make mine from the side. So you can see there. That's my nose. Right there. Pretty simple. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna add some ears, okay? Again, if you can, if you want, you can copy what I'm doing or kind of make it, make it similar, but it doesn't have to. Just make sure that you're using uh, shapes, just basic forms. That's one of my ears coming this way. And then we're gonna add my other one over here. By the time we're done, it's gonna be uh, completely covered with uh, ink and color, so it's gonna come out looking really good. So that's my ear, both my ears. There. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give myself hair. So I'm gonna put it over here. Oh, let's do the eyebrows first. So don't worry about um, like each hair. You can just make a kind of shape like that for the uh, for the eyebrow. And then maybe you can put uh, the other one here. One like that. Okay, I hope you all are following or making one of your own. I'm excited to see uh, what you all come up with. And if you do, if you are following along, you can always uh, tag us on any, any social media, I believe, um, Instagram or Facebook. And uh, yeah, that'll be really cool for us to see. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my forehead. I'm gonna go maybe something like this. Like that, so this is my forehead, my eyes. Ears, nose. Okay, and 
I'm just gonna get myself some hair. Kind of like that. And then I'm just gonna kind of cap it off like this. Kind of like that. Okay, next we're gonna go with the mouth. So the mouth will be somewhere over here. And I'm going to make it from the front view. So you're gonna, I'm going to uh, draw it right here and I'll show you all what I'm drawing. So a mouth is kind of like an M shape, like that. And then like that. That's the, the top lip over here. The bottom one is kind of a, I don't know what shape is that, but kind of like a, a trapezoid maybe. That's a mouth. Top lip, bottom lip. And then, um, since I did not shave this morning, I'm gonna put uh, some mustache hairs, and they can be very similar to the eyebrows. So I'm gonna make something like this for the for the thing. And I, I know it looks kind of messy right now, but it, uh, once we clean it up and go over it with uh, one of our sharpies, it's um or yeah sharpie pens, it's gonna look uh, a lot better. Okay, so we have the nose here, mouth, the eyes, glasses. What's left is the chin, pretty much. And um, go like that. If you're watching this live, um, in the comment section, you can put uh, what you think about uh, cubism. Is it something that you've done before, or do you think it's weird? Or maybe um, is this your first time doing it? Yeah, I would like to know. There you go. So this is what I ended up uh, doing, working on. Now we're gonna use our pen, uh, something like this. Mine's, uh, I used to, I'm using a different one, it's a bit thicker, it's just for, for you all to see, okay? So we're gonna go over our lines, you can see. I'm gonna, um, here where my eyebrow is, I'm just gonna kind of uh, outline it. You can see there, where my glasses are. And since we use uh, very basic shapes, like, um, uh, squares, uh, spheres, um, uh, cylinders, it's going to be kind of easy to kind of go over it with, uh, with a pen. Okay, that's one eye. Yeah, so the eye is basically just kind of like a rhombus or a diamond shape. You can even put the, the, eye, the eyelashes, kind of like this. You can make them very thin if you want. Like Yaretsi Garza from Alto Bonito says hi. Hello, Yaretsi. I hope you're following along. That's my eye. I, at, least, at least that's one eye. And then, oh, kind of like that. Don't be very uh, picky when you're doing them because um, it's supposed to look kind of weird either way. I'm gonna go ahead and try to finish up the shapes. So again, um, cubism is supposed to be kind of uh, fragmented and kind of distorted in a way. It's basically, um, the way you can think about it is you're drawing an image from different points of views, which is kind of like the main idea of cubism. And as well, you're also uh, using a bunch of shapes to do it. We have Maribel turning in from McAllen. McAllen. So it's uh, close from the museum, I'm assuming. Remember to use uh, simple shapes. Don't make it uh, hard on yourself. Here. I'm going to show you again for the people that are uh, tuning in uh, what it's going to uh, somewhat look like at the end. Kind of like this. Yeah, so when we're done, we're gonna end up something with something like this. Yeah, so the ears are basically just kind of uh, half circles in a way. Yeah. Okay, 
okay? I just need my hair. And there we go. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with the outline. So I think that you have to remember as well is that this uh, style of art was created um, when there was um, a lot of technological advances in the world. So uh, cameras were being made, uh, railroads, um, a bunch of other things. And uh, when you think about it, portraits uh, were becoming something that cameras can do. So instead of um, artists using art to replicate, replicate uh, people, like the way they look like, they started moving into um, making it more expressive and maybe different, like something that you might uh, see, like, yeah, something that's very unique and that you will probably never see anywhere. So that's what we're, the kind of concept that we're trying to get here. So uh, again, if you're doing it and you're, you're like looking at it and you're like, this looks nothing like me, that's kind of uh, the point in a way. Yeah, I don't know about, I don't, know if, you know, I don't know if he looks too much like me, but he's all right. Now we're gonna go for the neck. You just uh, kind of make a kind of like that, two lines. And if maybe you're wearing a fancy shirt, you can kind of go like this for the collar. Neck. Now we're gonna move on to uh, the filler pencils. Uh, make sure you're using the ones that uh, you got in your kit. If you don't have these, you can just use uh, regular ones. And if you did have one of these, you can just use uh, the ones that you have at home. I don't. We're gonna combine uh, these with these, and we're gonna end up with something real, real cool. Again, you can use uh, colors that are not kind of traditional. So you can have, um, you can use maybe like orange for, for like your hair. I mean, I mean, some people have orange hair, but um, blue for your hair um, and stuff like that. It just make it a lot more interesting. I'm gonna use. Uh, This kind of pink color for my ears. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and do that right now. And this bristle board uh, like allows uh, your color pencil to kind of just slide around, which is really, not, really nice. Um, yeah, so you're able, able to color um, a lot real fast, kind of like that. There's uh, the other ear. Yeah, also you can erase the pencil marks if you want. I kind of like them, I like how, how expressive they look, but um, yeah, I think sometimes uh, it requires you to kind of erase uh, some of the marks that were made. I like these, like that. So uh, Picasso, I don't know if you all know much about Picasso, but he was, uh, he was born in Spain. He was born in Spain and he was actually, he actually mastered uh, the regular art or what was known as traditional art at the time, which was kind of just making uh, like realism. So when it came down to uh, drawing people and uh, buildings and stuff like that, he was actually a master very uh, early on in his life. So he, he knew everything else. He already knew how to be a very good artist, but uh, it wasn't until, he was also very successful, but it wasn't until he created uh, cubism that he uh, became very kind of like a household name um, nowadays. Nowadays, when uh, somebody draws something nice, you might uh, say that he's a Picasso or, or that he is, um, um, yeah, that, uh, yeah, that's a Picasso uh, piece. But, but yeah, that's really what got him uh, famous or very uh, well known. So I'm going ahead and painting my beard blue or the shape that is supposed to represent my, my beard. I'm also gonna get my whiskers here, or my mustache. So it just depends on what color you wanna use. Um, 
I really recommend you all using um, cat colors that are not traditional that you won't see um, anywhere else. Okay, for my for my nose, I'm using a kind of a darker uh, brown from the from this one from the uh, pack of colors that we that you've got in your kit. So if you think about it right now, um, with technology being so good, uh, cameras are kind of like taking over, kind of like the realistic part of art. And I, I'm not saying um, that that's not uh, realistic art isn't um, fun or anything or is it, isn't impressive because it is. It does require you to learn a lot of uh, skills. But um, but yeah, I think uh, the real part of art is kind of creating something that is yours and that won't be can't be replicated. Um, easily, so uh, cameras are just yeah. Cameras just capture exactly how a moment is, but artists can kind of uh, alter that and kind of switch it up, whether it be uh, with colors or with um, uh, just uh, shapes like we're using right now. Okay, so our nose is that color. Let me see. I'm looking through my color pencils here. Forehead. I'm gonna go ahead and use this kind of an in-between color, kind of it's kind of uh, closer to the pink, but it has some kind of brown in there. So the beginning when uh, cubism was kind of first introduced, it was, uh, maybe you can imagine that a lot of people did not kind of like it. And that's true. Um, it took a while before um, cubism to be kind of shown in any exhibit. Um, yeah, the first entirely cubist exhibit was made, uh, was uh, opened in 1953. But, um, but yeah, there were some, some cases of cubism um, way before that. But at first people didn't get the, what it was. Um, it was going against everything that people knew. So you can imagine that it, it was hard for them to kind of, um, yeah, let that slide in a professional setting, like, a, like an exhibit or a, some kind of gallery. So this, is, this part right here will be kind of like where my cheek is. So I'm gonna make that a bit, I'm gonna use red for that. Because I get uh, sometimes I get I like um, yeah I get nervous or something or I get uh, shy and I do my eyes I mean my my cheek my cheeks get get a bit uh, rosy in color. I wonder how you all are doing. Hopefully you all are. Um, yeah, working on it, uh, working on your portrait. I'm, I'm really excited to see how you all uh, come out. Um, I wonder if you all managed to make it uh, look like you, because that can be a little bit hard. But I'm sure you all can do a good job with that. Okay, and we're gonna move on to the eyes. I'm gonna use green for the eyes. Again, you can just you, you can just complete this painting with I mean this art drawing with just these. But uh, I want you all to know that um, that cubism also involves using um, a, a lot of colors and different colors that you might not see. My eyes are a lot, a lot more brown in person, but I mean in, in real life. But I just think green. Uh, will look good in this uh, in this drawing. Here you go. We're gonna go back to the blue for the eyebrows. Again, you can use uh, orange. You can use whatever color you want on this. Hema says hi and very creative. Hema, okay. yeah, I remember you, Hema, from uh, some of the workshops that we have. Hello. I hope you're following along. Okay, 
Uh, that's the uh, eyebrows. Uh, for the mouth, I'm gonna go ahead and choose maybe the same pink that we used here, or the red that we used here. Yeah. Oh, pink. lips are red already in the first place, so. Cindy says it looks so cool. <laughs> Thank you. I, I like that. I, I like that you all are enjoying this uh, the process. This is the bottom lip. Yeah, and some of these uh, kind of um, features that you may have can just easily be shapes like we're using here. So always remember that and. Yeah, kind of uh, experiment with that. You can always uh, kind of change it, make it different. So if I were to make this again, if I were if I were to make another cubist uh, portrait again, let's say tomorrow, or even right after this, it would completely look different. Um, and and yeah, that's really kind of like the the fun of it. Okay, I'm gonna use the brown that we used for the nose uh, down here for where the chin is. Right here. Uh, one cool thing about uh, Cubism as well, or about Picasso, was that he was inspired by um, some of uh, some of the cultural kind of uh, mass in Africa. Because if you look at some of those, I wish I had uh, some of those to show you all, but if you were to look those up, uh, they have a lot of features that um, Cubist paintings or Cubist sculptures have. So that's one cool fact about it. So even Picasso that is supposed to be this uh, great master at, at, at art or drawing he needs uh, some kind of ex um, yeah, some kind of uh, external help uh, to get uh, motivated or to get inspired here we go now I'm gonna do the, the glasses next I'm gonna go ahead and use it's kind of fun to just kind of be choosing a uh, uh, yeah, choosing the the colors. I'm gonna go ahead and use dark. Oh, this is just uh, black. Yeah, we can use black. And this is a big paper, so I'm trying to uh, be able to finish it with you all. That's why maybe I might be moving a bit too fast, or maybe I'm coloring too fast. So yeah, my excuses for that. Um, but yeah, you can take your time, you can uh, really kind of get in there and color perfectly. So if you think about it, um, drawing has always been about drawing something uh, three-dimensional. So when you draw something from, uh, like from your from real life, let's say you're gonna draw maybe your dog or your cat. The main goal of that drawing is to draw three-dimensionally. So uh, you're trying to make an image look like it's a uh, like in like real. And and in real life, things are are not flat, kind of like this. They're um, they have shape and they have form and they kind of twist and stuff. Um, so yeah, so this goes against all of those principles that people knew about art. And this is why um, cubism is very, uh, very different and very, uh, yeah, it's an art movement that a lot of people know and that was very impactful. Like even now, uh, artists from nowadays are, are using cubism to uh, make their drawings. Even in uh, people that draw cartoons and stuff, animations, they use a lot of uh, things that they learned from uh, cubist, uh, cubism, to be able to make a uh, very, uh, like this distinct characters that you might like that you see in the, the TV. Because if you think about it, cartoon, like cartoons are just kind of um, simplifying forms and simplifying um, the human body, which is what we're kind of doing right now. Okay, so I got the glasses. I'm gonna move on to the hair. I'm gonna try to do that uh, uh, quickly so y'all won't have to just see me color a big part of the, of the, of the paper. I'm gonna go with green. 
looks like I have grass for hair. Do you guys want to help him choose the color of his shirt? Oh yeah, you can comment that. That'll be fine. Look, we have some pencil colors here. We have orange, blue, yellow, brown, green, red, black. What color do you all think Edgar should point should paint his shirt? So it'll be this part here. Comment to let us know and he'll choose that color. Maribel says orange. We have one orange. vote for orange. It's actually a very good um, uh, I think color choice. We haven't used orange, but we used um, kind of browns, and browns are kind of uh, like dark orange in a way. Oh, so Rudy. Gonna, yeah, so that's gonna kind of look, I think that's gonna look pretty good, but we can get some other suggestions. Rudy and Rosario say red. Red, they can match my, my lips here. And Cindy says yellow. So yellow. we have two. Yeah, yeah, yellow is good too. Two votes oh, for they're red. Good, they're good, um, what if we do like a rainbow shirt? <laughs> So we got two reds, you said? Yeah, two okay. votes for red, okay, so one for yellow, and one for orange. Um, we're gonna wait a little bit more to see if maybe people vote more, because I think red is winning right now, because we got two people. All right, comment in, in the comments. Let us know what color you think Edgar should paint his, should color his shirt. Here are your choices. We got some blue, yeah, I got a bunch of them, orange, so. yellow, red, green. Oh, Tanya green. says reddish orange. Oh, it's a red orange. So in between, I think, yeah, I think. Why well, choose one? Yeah. <laughs> that would make everybody happy. And there's a, uh, we use red orange. There we go. Uh, the hair's all done. Like that. You can go darker here. Um, with a. Uh, we have another vote for reddish orange. Red orange. I like that idea too. Yeah, so then you can show us how to mix colors and make yes, a reddish orange. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the shirt already. So red reddish orange is the winner, or red orange it's called. And and yeah, so first when you're gonna mix, uh, this is uh, what I know about uh, mixing colors, especially um, uh, color pencils. So you're gonna get the lighter color first. So in this case, uh, we have orange and red. Um, lighter color is orange. So orange is generally a bit lighter, but in a way they're kind of the same. But um, yeah, orange is just a lighter color. Because if you think about it, you mix uh, yellow with red to make, um, yeah, to make orange. And yellow is a light color. So orange is lighter than red, so we're going with uh, orange first, lightly. So you're just gonna wanna make kind of like that lightly. Don't press too hard because it's gonna kind of be hard to go over it. Move this tape here. I know there's no line there, so I can finish it up. Like that. Now we're gonna get our red and kind of uh, start going over it. And you can, uh, if you know about shading, you can do that too. Where you press and then you kind of uh, let go, kind of like that. So I'm gonna do that in both colors over here. So one over there, one over here. To get a nice red orange color. And there, it's reminding me of a like a smoothie, <laughs> which I might go for after this. That's how you kind of mix colors. And again, uh, you know how to shade a little bit. Remember, you can just press hard and then slowly kind of uh, let go. Don't, don't, don't press as, as hard as you're going down. So again, pressing, pressing hard and then letting go. That's how, that's how you shade. And I know uh, it's a lot more complicated than that, but um, yeah, maybe one day we'll have a workshop where we learn how to shade. Okay, that's my shirt color. Uh, last thing I need, um, I just need uh, maybe like the skin here for the where the eye is and my neck. I'm gonna use the brown for my neck. I think it's only fitting a little bit since I use that for for my chin and my nose. There we go. 
go. I'm going to do the same uh, with the eye here. And if you uh, manage to put some eyelashes, eyelashes you can uh, color those a different color. I'm going to color them blue right now. you all how to do that how to do that um, so here we all know that our ears are kind of um yeah so we have like the ear canal so it goes in so this part is supposed to be a bit darker than this part so we can do that i know this this isn't a uh, shading kind of a workshop but we can add some of those elements here so this would be a bit, just a bit darker i don't know if the camera picks this up but it's just ever so slightly darker Remember again about the giveaway. I want to remind you all again. So if you got a kit, you can you're automatically um, entered in the giveaway. You can always uh, comment down below as well if you want a, a second chance to enter. Just gonna give a, we're gonna give out uh, like a bunch of uh, summer toys that you can uh, play with outside. So like frisbees. Um, I know uh, I think a box of chalk I believe and some. What else was there? Some bubbles. Yeah, some bubbles. Um, I think some some kind of um, yeah balls to play with. So yeah, they're gonna be it's gonna be a bunch of things. And it's uh, yeah, hopefully one of y'all gets it. So okay. be sure to comment to enter that giveaway, and okay. we'll be drawing on Friday to see who won. All right, and just to finish it off, I'm gonna go over it with uh, not over it, but uh, I'm gonna outline it with the sharpie pen because when you give it a kind of like a thicker outline, it tends to look better. Uh, uh, to look, not better, but a lot more complete. It looks like it's uh, red. There. It shouldn't take me long. Um, I hope you all um, uh, know or have learned something about uh, cubism. A lot of some people don't like it, but uh, there is something um, there that is very interesting. The fact that you can make a piece unique and uh, different from just maybe like a picture. That's how we, that's always gonna have value in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I hope you all maybe use it to uh, for some more, some other uh, drawings that you might do at home. I don't know if you draw too much at home, but I used to draw a lot too when I was a, when I was a kid. And I still do. So uh, yeah, I hope you all continue drawing because everybody draws and stuff when they're when they're a kid, but not everybody continues to draw, and I think that's uh, like a distinction of somebody that um, that uh, knows how to draw in the future or when you're older, somebody that knows how to draw and that's very skilled with that, and somebody that maybe feels like they can't draw, which I don't think so. I think everybody can draw. It's just that you need some practice. Done uh, lining it up here. Okay, so the last thing that we're gonna do is uh, sign it. I usually like to sign my stuff at the end, at the bottom, kind of like professionally. So if uh, Pablo Picasso we were to see your work, he I think he would be impressed by your work because uh, you're doing some cubism. There we go. I'm gonna stand up. Like that. So I, I think it looks like me a little bit. In a way, maybe if you uh, squint your eyes a little bit. So this is uh, my cubist portrait. I'm gonna put my name here in the bottom. You should do that too. And if you don't know how to do cursive, it doesn't matter. You just put your initials or your name. Yeah, 
Edgar Cortez. That right there. And there we go. Awesome. So don't forget to post your own drawings. You can post that after this video ends or you can post anytime on your page and just tag us in it so we can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to thank everybody that, uh, that was watching us and was uh, working on this activity with me. Uh, it was really fun. Uh, I got a lot, of, a lot done today. I hope you all are also getting some stuff done. You can see both things here. Um, yeah, thank you. I hope you all join us next next uh, next month. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I know it's going to be art related. And Optical it's going to be uh, very fun as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you.